Want to learn how to progress and become an experienced skydiver here in Canada? Well, keep on watching! Hey there, it's Catherine Bernier from Skydive Vibes and I'm partnering up with the Canadian Sport Parachuting Association to bring you this video series about becoming a skydiver in Canada. In this video, we will talk about the different levels or certificate of proficiency that you can get as a skydiver to develop your skills. Before we start, you will find all the links and resources I'm gonna talk about in this video in the description below. So feel free to visit them if you want more information. So in the sport of skydiving, we have levels or certificate of proficiency where you can gain more skills and experience to progress as a skydiver. At each of those levels, you'll be trained to develop a certain number of skills and improvements that will allow you to become better perform in the sport and get privileges. The different levels from the Canadian Sport Parachuting Associations are the Solo Certificate of Proficiency, the A, B, C and D Certificate. On a personal note, my biggest advice to you is to progress through those certificates as soon as you reach the requirements. What I mean is that if you have to have 50 jumps in order to get your B certificate, as an example, well, make sure to work towards getting your B around that 50 jumps number. I've seen so many jumpers having good experience in the sport due to the number of jumps they had, but couldn't access a certain discipline just because they didn't have the right certificate of proficiency. So avoid being disappointed by making sure that when you're ready, you have the proper certificate of proficiency. All right, so let's start with the solo certificate, which is the first one you'll get after your skydiver course. By the way, if you want to watch the other videos we made about the first jump courses and the two progression path that you can take to become a certified skydiver, you can click right here. But those programs give you the solo certificate. This certificate allows you to jump by yourself without direct supervision of an instructor. Of course, to get it, you'll have to demonstrate that you can plan and conduct a safe skydive all by yourself. This certificate is recognized nationally and not internationally, meaning that officially you are only recognized as solo certified in Canada. So as you'll go through your progression to become a solo skydiver, you will have to develop the skills and demonstrate that you can exit the plane stable, do certain maneuvers in the sky like 360 turns, and be able to deploy safely at the right altitude. You'll also have to demonstrate your abilities under the canopy, being able to conduct a good landing pattern and land safely all by yourself. You will learn about malfunctions and the emergency procedures you need to make, and you'll also have to pass a theoretical exam to get your solo certificate. In order to qualify, you'll have to have a total of about 10 jumps and a minimum of three minutes of free fall time. This certificate will allow you, of course, to do solo skydives and be able to jump one-on-one -on -one with a coach or an instructor to develop your formation skydiving skills, meaning to be able to fly with someone else in the sky. And you can jump in wind speed of maximum 15 miles per hour or seven meters per second. The next one is the A certificate and you can get access to it when you reach 25 jumps. So this certificate is the one that is recognized internationally. So as soon as you have your A certificate, you can now skydive all around the world. And you'll also have to demonstrate that you have some skills for formation skydiving so that you can fly with other people safely. You'll also have to complete 10 self-guided stand-up landings within 30 meters of a target and demonstrate various abilities under your canopy using your front risers, your rear risers and your toggles. This is also at that level that you'll learn how to pack a canopy. Next, you'll also have to review your emergency procedures and do a theoretical exam. So overall, to qualify, you'll need 25 jumps and a minimum of 10 minutes of free fall time. With this certificate, now you'll be able to participate in two ways formation skydiving with another experienced jumper who needs to have at least a B license with 100 jumps 
and the approbation of a coach too. You'll also be able to participate in some national or provincial competitions as long as you fill out all the requirements. You'll be able to experience night jumps and water landings as long as you get the proper briefing for those. You'll be able to sign the logbook of your friends skydivers as long as you witnessed their jump. And now you'll be able to jump in higher wind speed of about 18 miles per hour or 9 meters per second. All right, so once you have your A certificate, you will now start to progress towards your B certificate, which you will be able to apply for when you get around 50 jumps. This certificate is for me one of the most important that will give you the most experience in your skydiving progression. Because at that level, you'll be able to jump with a lot more people and try different disciplines. So as you'll be working to get your B certificate, you'll have to demonstrate that you can jump with others safely. In terms of the free fall skills, you'll have to demonstrate those under the requirements of the B certificate. As an example, you'll have to do a series of multiple figures in under a certain amount of time to demonstrate that you are mastering those skills. Again, landing is an important part, so you'll have to complete 10 self-guided stand-up landings within 15 meters of a target. You'll also have to develop some abilities under canopy using your risers and your toggles. And in the end, of course, you still have to review your emergency procedures and do a theoretical exam. To be ready to get your B certificate, you'll have to have demonstrated the skills needed, at least 50 jumps and a minimum of 30 minutes of free fall time. And now the fun begins because with that B certificate, you can now jump with groups of skydivers, with your friends, and you can also experience many other disciplines. This is also when you'll be able to start your progression towards becoming a skydiving coach and eventually an instructor. So you'll be able to start with your coach one rating and you'll also be able to start with your rigor A course. Finally, you'll still be able to jump in wind speeds to a maximum of 18 miles per hour or nine meters per second. Now, the next step is the C certificate. For that, you'll need a minimum of 200 jumps to qualify, and you'll also be able to jump in higher wind speeds. So as you'll be working up to your C certificate, of course, you'll have to develop a certain amount of skills in free fall and under canopy. For the free fall part, you'll have to do some four ways formation skydiving to demonstrate that you can fly with others at a higher level of complexity. You may also choose to demonstrate abilities in the free fly discipline as well, doing a certain series of figures. You'll be able to choose the canopy skills you want to demonstrate, but in the choices, you'll get 10 stand-up landings within 10 meters of a target, or as another example, canopy formation skills. Again, you'll have emergency procedures to review and a theoretical exam to pass. But once you have accumulated 200 jumps and a minimum of 60 minutes of free fall time, you'll be able to get your C certificate. Once you have it, you'll qualify for the position of the DZ safety officer, meaning that you will be there to make sure that everyone's have safe skydives. You will also qualify to get your demo jumps certification. One interesting thing with this certificate is that you'll be able to jump in higher wind speeds of a maximum of 25 miles per hour or 11 meters per second. Now, last but not least, the D certificate of proficiency. This is the highest certificate you can get and you can qualify for it when you get 500 jumps. To reach that level of proficiency, you will have to demonstrate again abilities in free fall with even more strict series or performance to do. Under canopy as well, you'll have to demonstrate more advanced skills. As an example, you can choose to demonstrate 15 consecutive pre-planned jumps within two meters of a target. Here again, there will be a theoretical exam and once you reach 500 jumps, a minimum of three hours of free fall time, you'll be able to get your D certificate. The main advantages of this certificate is that you'll now be able to choose whether or not you want 
to wear head protection with the permission of the DZ operator. And you can still jump in wind speeds of a maximum of 25 miles per hour or 11 meters per second, which is the maximum allowed for everyone on a drop zone. There you have it! Oof, that's a lot of information, so make sure to check in the description for the links of all those certificates and all of their requirements to give you even more details. So I hope this video series did help you to better understand how you can start in the sport and become a skydiver in Canada. Make sure to re-watch any of those videos by clicking right here. So now make sure to contact the drop zone near you and book your course to become a skydiver. Thanks for watching and blue skies! The Canadian Sport Parachuting Association partnered with Skydive Vibes with the goal of demystifying the sport of skydiving and to share awareness of our sport. The goal of producing those videos is not to detail the exact progression of becoming a skydiver, but rather share some of the content and steps that you may go through as you advance. The exact progression may vary across the country and at different skydiving centers.